Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I wanna to discuss how to create an interactive restaurant menu in Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create scrolling frames, add animation, and work with object states. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start creating our interactive restaurant menu. Uh, before we do get started, I'm working on a iPhone X page layout. So when you go to File and New Document or Creating a New Document, instead of the Print tab, go to Mobile. And because this tutorial is focusing on creating this restaurant menu for mobile device, I selected the iPhone X. You can select any of these devices. You can make it a web-sized uh, uh, page. That's totally up to you, and it's gonna be de dependent on how this menu will be displayed. But just know that once the menu is opened, the link is opened, you can zoom in as well. So I'm gonna hit close, and this is the iPhone X layout. I'm gonna add another page to this, so I can create, recreate what I've done here, the design, and then add the interactivity, the scrolling frame, and the image slider as well. So we're gonna be working with object states, we're gonna be doing scrolling frame, adding a bit of animation, and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I do wanna grab a couple guides that I've set up here, just so I know um, my starting point. So I'm gonna hit uh, Command C, or Edit Copy. And I'm gonna make my way down to the second page here. And I'm just gonna to go to edit, paste in place, and it's going to paste those two guides that I've had on that previous page in the same place, okay? And let's start by bringing over our main image for our restaurant. By the way, this is all fictional, so um, you can make up all this content on your own but if you're doing it for a real business or client or for your own restaurant, then that'll be helpful to you. So there's the main image. I do have the logo that I'm just gonna copy and paste over here. And let's bring that to the front. So shift command, square bracket, right square bracket. We'll go to object and uh, arrange, and then you can bring it to the front, which it already is. And I do have a overlay here, gradient overlay. Let me show you how that's done. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the, the rectangle frame tool and just draw out another frame, like so, over that over the image. Go to my swatches panel and make it black. Go to the properties panel and in the effects selection here, let's choose gradient feather. And then of course you can adjust the gradient feather so it's near the bottom. Reason being is that logo was white and it was hard to see on the image. So I'm just adding some of like a, a shadow, a gradient shadow um, feather. So that looks good about there. And then you could play with the gradient stop, the main gradient stop, and then you can actually move the, um, the white stop as well. So something like that is good for now. I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm gonna grab my logo and bring that to the front so you can now see it looks a lot better on that dark uh, feather that I've just created. So that's good. Let's move on. Now it's time to, um, oh, I do want to create three columns on this. You see on this layout here, I've created three column setup. That's gonna help you when you're uh, laying out your images and placing text. So let's go up to layout, create guides. And in this case, I just want three columns. Make sure your preview is selected. Fit the guides to the margins and not the page. And then just hit OK. You can add rows if you'd like, if that helps you place content um, in this situation. So, But I'm just going to leave it at zero and have it at three columns. So that's good. So now I can start adding my content. And let's start by grabbing our text tool type tool and just drawing out a frame like that and we'll start by adding pizza. Now I do have, I did create some, um, I did create 
some style style guides here, which are going to help me as I'm designing. So we'll start with pizza. And I have three images here. I'm sorry, six images. Let's go ahead and grab our rectangle frame tool and start out by drawing out a frame about that size. Maybe a little bit deeper, that's good. And in this case, I wanna round the corners. So let's click on this little yellow square here that allows you to edit the corners. Click it once and then bring in any one of these to round the corners. So something like that is good. I'm gonna start by dragging out, or dragging in, I should say, the images. So there's the first image, which is the classic pizza. I'm going to create another type uh, text frame here, underneath. And I do have the text that will correspond with all of these. So here's the first one. Let's make the classic, the food header. No, nope, that's not what I want. Uh, this is pizza header. And then I'm just gonna make this a little bit deeper. And then this one is called uh, pizza or food description. Perfect. So instead of recreating that um, five other times, I'm just gonna grab both of them and I'm just Alt, I'm sorry, Option and drag or Alt on Windows to drag and make another copy. And then I'm just gonna go to Edit and I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate it. So how many more? We got four, we need two more. And you'll see why I'm having them off the pasteboard in just a sec here. Um, and let's go ahead now and replace these images. And it's good to number your images so you know which order they'll be in. So this one is number three. So what I'll do here is I'll grab, um, grab four, five, and six together, bring them on the page together. There they are in my loaded cursor, and now I can just drop them in those frames, which makes it much easier than dragging them individually. Okay, and then you're just gonna have to alter these to make them fit a little bit better. These are all stock images from Unsplash, so that's a good resource if you need stock images. Um, I always try to credit, if I'm using this for real real life projects, try to credit credit the, the photographers. Okay, good, I have all the images in now. Now I just have to go ahead and update these um, descriptions, which I have as well. Okay, so I have all the pizza images in with the pizza descriptions and the price. Now I'm gonna show you how to add them into a container to make a scrolling frame. Now for this example, you're gonna to need to download the um, Ajar Productions in five, in five scrolling frames panel, which I will drop the link in the description to make it easier to find. There's just a process that you have to go through They'll email you a zip file and then you can download the scrolling frame from there, okay? When you do, you'll have the N5 drop down here with the interactive widgets and then you'll have the scrolling frames panel, which I'm just gonna pull off to the side for now. It's not gonna make any sense until you actually add the container. I'm going to select all this together and I'm going to group it. So I'm gonna do Command G and let's go to um, edit cut okay I'm going to now drag out a container that will be the scrolling frame for my pizza menu up top so there you go I have that and I'm just gonna while while I have it clicked go to edit paste into 
Okay. And I'm just going to adjust the, the, the size of that container. Before I do that, let me adjust the size. Good. Now let's go ahead and do edit paste into. Give that a second there and you'll see that it'll pop in. Perfect. Now this has to be a little bit deeper. Good. You want to leave a little bit of space on the right hand side, or I'm sorry, the bottom, so you can see the actual scroll. But once you have, you can see if I click in here, I'm holding shift and I'll drag that over. You can see that the other three pizzas are there too. So it's in that container. Um, and we'll, we'll set the scroll up now as well. So I'm going to click this again and back to my in five scroll direction. I can select that and have it auto detect. But because I know this is going to be horizontal, I'll leave it just at that. And I'll show you how that looks. So I can open any of the interactive um, menus here or the panels and click your EPUB preview. And you can see that the scrolling frame that we just set up is operating very nicely. So that works as well. So now we can move on and I'll show you how to create the image slide uh, with the food descriptions for pasta using object states, animation and buttons and forms. Okay, we're gonna create a interactive photo slider for the pasta section. And I have three images that I'm gonna bring over. First will be pasta pomodoro. Second will be Alfredo. So, and it's okay if you overshoot on some of these images, they, they will be the same size. And let's bring in the last one, pesto. Perfect. And the reason I am putting them on top of one another is they're gonna become a multi-state object and you'll see what that means in just a second. So I wanna make sure that these are all on the margin here. And let's go ahead and just to make sure that they're all, yep, good. So I'm gonna select all of them and use my alignment tools to align horizontal centers, vertical centers. And then I'm just gonna make sure that they're right on the margin, perfect. I do wanna reorder these, so I'm gonna to go to my layers panel and you can see there's pesto JPEG, there's Alfredo JPEG, and there's spaghetti. So let's make spaghetti first. Let's make Alfredo second, and then pesto is third. It's important that you rank them here um, just because it'll make it easier when you're setting up the multi-state object. Now I do have the descriptions to go with each of these, Pomodoro, Alfredo, pesto. And in my layers panel, I went ahead and also renamed those to make it easier. So I'm just gonna select, let's bring these onto the, let's bring them onto the page. With your selection tool, go ahead and collect them, select all of them, make sure that they're aligned vertically, horizontally. And much like the pictures, the images, these are all stacked on one another as well. Great, so I have the images and I have the descriptions to go with each image ready to go. I do have a couple buttons here, the icons that I'm going to create, set up a button structures. Let's bring those to the front. Okay. And the reason why I'm, I'm putting them on the margin right now, I want to make sure that they're, let's align these centers vertically as well. And let's go ahead and click on the first one and hold down your shift key and your left arrow key and count to six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can go more than that if you want. Click on this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So now I know these are aligned, the spacing is equal, and we're ready to go here. I have my object states panel on the side here. If you need that, go to window, interactive object states. I've gone over how to use this in previous tutorials. And it's very useful if you're creating a interactive menu for a restaurant. So let's go ahead and select all three of these images first. So with your selection tool, just drag and collect all of them. 
go to your object states, work your way to the bottom right hand corner and click create new multi-state object. Now I want to rename the object name. The main uh, name of this will be pasta menu, uh, let's say pasta, pasta menu images. State one is Pomodoro. State two is Alfredo and state three is pesto. Okay, so we have our three states ready to go. We have to do the same to the actual description. So go ahead and select those as well. And this will be its own multi-state object. So let's call this pasta uh, descriptions, pasta descriptions. Okay, and the first one will be um, Pomodoro description. Okay, second will be Alfredo description. And the last one will be Pesto description. And you'll see why renaming these will make life a little bit easier when you're working. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead now and create button structures so that when we're scrolling through these, um, the image will change and the corresponding description will appear as well. So for this, we need buttons and forms. Buttons and forms, go to Window, Interactive, Buttons and Forms. I'm going to tear this, this one off and combine it with my object states. Okay. So let's go ahead and click the forward button first, okay? The one on the right, the type will be button. The name of this will be forward uh, two. Because I've created a button on the previous layout called forward, I don't want there to be any confusion. So just call it forward two. All right, on release or tap will be the event. And the action, click the plus button, the icon here. And this will go to next state. And down below here, the object, we have, we're gonna have two to choose from. Let's start with pasta menu images, okay? And we want um, it to uh, go to the next state, so that's good. And let's add a secondary, secondary action of go to next state. But in this case, we want it to also go to the next pasta description state, okay? So that forward button will now go to the next state for the pasta images, and it'll also go to the next state for the description. Let's repeat the same step for the previous button. So let's create that into a button, and this will be called previous button two. Release or tap is good. Action, go to previous state. Okay, and it will be previous menu uh, images. Let's add a secondary action to go to a previous state, but in this case, let's change the object state to go to pasta descriptions. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out in our EPUB preview, and let's see how that looks. You can see I can make my way through these, and they're changing, the description is changing along with the image. Now you can make it a hard transition like that, or we can add an animation to give it a soft transition as we're clicking through. Um, it, that's totally up to you, but we will add an animation to have it fade in as we're clicking through. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this one will need window interactive animation. And again, I already have mine here. So I'm just going to tear it off and combine it into this panel. All right, so I'm in animation now, but the trick here is you have to drive into each object um, state to add the animation. If I add the animation to this entire, this entire block here, it will not take effect. So what I have to do here is click on object states, click on Pomodoro, double click, and now I'm driven into that, that state. Go back to animation, and in the preset, let's have it fade in, okay? 
And you can see the event here already has on state load. So that's good. Let's go back to object states, click Alfredo, double click to drive into that specific state, go to animation, the preset will be fade in. And let's go back to object states, click pesto, double click to drive into that state, go back to animation, click the preset and choose fade in. Okay. Now let's have a look and see how that looks um, in terms of how the, the images transition when you click the buttons. So let's have a look now. If we click, you can see there's a little bit more of a soft transition. They fade in instead of that hard transition. But again, that's totally up to you. If you like the hard transition, then stick with that or add an animation. If you do add an animation, remember you have to go through the object states panel, double click to drive into the selection and then add the animation. And then you get that cool transition like this. I'm going to show you how to finish this off. We'll add one more row of food items here and then create a master scrolling frame and then test it out on mobile. Okay, let's add one more section to this interactive restaurant menu. This one will be gelato. And because I'm running out of real estate here, I'm just going to bring this stuff up just for now. And I'm going to copy pasta and bring that down. Let's zoom in a bit here. This one will be called gelato, which is a type of ice cream. I'm going to need a little bit more space in that. So why don't we actually bring up the pizza. Let's bring up pasta and the descriptions. Okay. And that might be enough space there. Let's bring that like so. Perfect. I have an image here of four different gelato ice creams. And I'm just going to drag that out like so. And because this is on a white background, that's fine. I do have to add, <clears throat> I do have to add the actual type of flavors here. So let's do that as well. And I'm just going to grab my type tool, draw out a frame like so. This one is strawberry. Let's see if I have a paragraph style for that. Yeah, gelato description, perfect. And then what I'll do is I'll just maybe copy this over a few times. Perfect. This one's vanilla. This one is berry chip and this last one is chocolate now these may not align so what I'll do is actually let's make these four different images so then we can space them out a little bit more as well okay let's go ahead and make another copy this one will be berry chip. And then let's go ahead and make one last copy, which will be chocolate. I'm holding my shift key while I'm dragging them over just so that I'm keeping the alignment as I'm dragging. Let's go ahead and collect all of these and use our distribution um, alignments here. So let's distribute them. We're gonna distribute them uh, horizontally. Let's drag, let's hold our shift and command and make this a little bit smaller and then we can drag it out. Let's make the chocolate one go to one margin and the vanilla strawberry, I should say. Okay. And let's go ahead again, distribute those, make sure that they're all lined. Now that I have everything in order here, now I can create one master 
I do want to make these headers black as a final step here because I don't really like that color. It doesn't really go well. So let's just keep everything black here at 90% tint, black, and one more. Black, 90%, perfect. Now let's create one master uh, scrolling frame on this. So let's zoom out, grab everything, and let's bring everything down. Perfect, so you see down below here that the gelato section is off the page a little, and that's okay because I'm gonna create a scrolling frame that will allow me to bring them up as I scroll. So you saw how I created a scrolling frame here. We're gonna do another one for the entire section or the entire menu. So grab your rectangle frame tool, start at the top and go ahead and draw out a frame that ends after the pasta section. So we don't want the gelato to be in this. We want to be able to scroll that into. So let's do that. And actually before I did that, I should have, let's, let's go back a step here. What I wanna do now is select all of this and group it, okay? So I've selected everything, pizza, pasta, gelato, everything you see here except for the top image is grouped. Let's go ahead now and Command X. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, I want to make sure that I draw out my frame first. So grab your, grab the rectangle frame. Start at the top. Drag out a master frame that will stop right underneath the pasta section. Okay. Let's go ahead and. Click anywhere down below on this gelato, grab it, click it, and command X. Click the container here, right click, paste into. You can see now everything that we've cut and grouped is now in this container, which is the master um, the scrolling frame. You just wanna make sure that you leave enough space on the right hand side that you'll be able to see the scrolling frame. I'm gonna go up to the top right hand corner and click the share button. And let's make our way down to publish online. In the publish your document online window, I'm going to rename this to restaurant menu new. You can update an existing document. I'm just gonna publish a new document. And I only wanna publish page two because that's the one page that I showed you how to create. So let's go ahead now and click publish. It'll open up in a web browser once it's finished uploading. And this shouldn't take long because there's not, there's not much uh, content on this other than images. I'm going to click on view document. It's gonna open up inside of my web browser and you can see I have my scrolling frame set up here and right here so I can scroll down and see the rest of my menu. Let's see how our interactive photo slider works using the object states and the animation. You can see there's soft transitions throughout um, the images and you can see the descriptions down below are also changing. So now I'm going to show you how it looks on a mobile device. Okay, so I've opened up the interactive restaurant menu on my iPhone. I can scroll through the pizza items on that scrolling frame there. I can scroll up and down uh, on the master scrolling frame that we set up using the in five scrolling frame panel. And let's check out our image slider and go through those images. You can see there's a soft transition as we look through it. I'm just pressing on the, the, the forward and previous buttons and those work as well. So that's how you create an interactive restaurant menu in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new tutorials are released. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.